Let's have a look at Red Bull's performance in testing. It looked metronomic. They were doing their impression of F1's ver uh, version of the Statue of David. They looked picturesque. They looked sculpted. And they were letting it all hang out for everyone to see. Chris, is Red Bull as magnificent and as composed and as prepared as they seem to be? Yeah, short answer, yes. Um, they've really kind of entered this harmony between the car, the team, and the, and the driver particularly that is very akin to what they had with Sebastian Vettel in the early 2010s when he was dominating the sport and rewriting um, the record books. Um, so I think um, particularly in the early part of the season, they will be probably the team to beat. You won't see the effect of their aero restrictions from the uh, cost cap breach that is, that is part of their punishment uh, because most of the work had already gone into the 2023 car. Yeah. So you won't see that until like the development say, phase yeah. of the season. Yes, yeah, slightly or, or harder to draw the new design when your wrist has been slightly slapped in the manner that Red Bull yeah. had theirs very, very gently uh, disciplined. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a couple of wraps with the cane <laughs> there, yeah. maybe, in comparison. But uh, yeah, I think they're the team to be at the start of the season. Matt? Yeah, I mean, they essentially showed up to testing, painted a big target on their back and said, come get me if you can. And I think that's fine. They started out with the, I mean, they had the advantage at the end of the season. If everybody develops the same amount, they should continue with that. Where the testing restrictions might get interesting is if they wind up in a close fight with, say, Ferrari. Or, you know, let's just, why not shoot for the moon? A three-way with Mercedes and Ferrari. Going into the end of the season, they might begin to find that they're a little unhappy that their accountants didn't do the best possible job for them last season. But aside from mm -hmm. that, the thing that, the thing that struck me about this, two things. One, yeah. they're on supposedly the minimum weight limit, which is good because the tires weigh two kilograms more. The power unit has to weigh one kilogram more which means that they found some more weight savings over the course of the off season. That and the fact that Perez in general, although he had, he had a harder time with tire degradation, I think than uh, Verstappen did on one lap pace, he looked to be much closer, which suggests that the evolution that Red Bull have brought, because it really is an evolution of their design is possibly more neutral and offers some setup possibilities to help Perez be closer to the front. And and just on that, obviously, there's a, a sort of slightly different spec of tyre for this year that is said to be, I don't want to say contributing it, and there's like the whole reason why Perez is, is uh, a bit closer to Max, um, maybe, but maybe they've done stuff with the car as well. But overall, there's a lot less sort of push in the, in the front end. And like you say, Matt, it's more neutral and uh, favouring. What was it before? Even, what even, was it before? Even favouring isn't... Um, so where's it come it from? The right let, let, word. Let's make that clear. Where, where, where have the tyres come from if we're talking about tending to Perelli. be oversteery or understeery? <laughs> Italy, yeah, choose one. Nice one, mate. Uh, yeah, so are, are we saying they've become more, more neutral from what? Yeah, from a more understeered Oh, balance. okay, okay. Well, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that suit Verstappen more? Out Wait, of those you, two? Well, Verstappen has this knack of being able to oh, right, I see. take any kind of car, doesn't he? And being able to make it um fast but i think perez does like a more neutral car oh i see okay uh, matt so uh, the point of the new tires was that understeer was a big problem with this regulation set the new front tires are meant to help combat that understeer and by all accounts they have absolutely done that how does this help perez who prefers either a neutral or slight understeer compared to verstappen who likes a much pointier car well, what it means is that Red Bull can have a more neutral platform and allow the tires to help Verstappen be pointy and still have the room for mechanical suspension adjustment to give Perez something closer to the field that he needs to be fast through corners. And so it, by giving them extra room on the pointy end, Red Bull can actually dial back a little bit and still give both drivers more of what they're looking for in a very simple but not at all technically accurate explanation 
That's well, what that all sounds very good and, and exactly what I think is happening. But do you really think that Red Bull have given two hoots to what Perez actually wants? As long as Verstappen has the car he wants, why does it matter what Perez wants? Because do you remember all those times Perez started eighth and tenth? and was able to give Max no help at all up at the front. And if we look at Ferrari times, I mean, we see Leclerc like, what, thousands ahead of signs? Yeah, when you're fighting for the world championship, you want the uh, Mexican Minister of Defense to be starting P2 (laughs) if Max is starting P1, don't ya? Uh, There's a big assumption here that, that Red Bull are the Verstappen team. So, and that may well be accurate, but I do feel like, if, if they come up with a car and, and Perez happens to be faster because it suits him, I, I don't think that they're at all costs going to say, no, it has to be Verstappen. I don't think Verstappen has the same grip on Red Bull as Schumacher on Ferrari. But even if they are a Verstappen team, you still want Perez to be the one mm. coming second. Not only to take points away from your rivals, but also it's great for the Constructors' Championship as well. Clearly, all this conversation for me is holding the hope out as a Perez fan that there's just a chance that he comes out of the blocks and he just looks a little faster. Verstappen has a couple of DNFs. Oh, darn, that's unlucky. Safe ones, mind you. And then suddenly Red Bull are almost politically forced to uh, to back Perez and ask Verstappen to support Perez, which he won't. <laughs> He definitely, (laughs) definitely won't. And then that paves the way for for the Mercedes push. Or or whoever, I'm neutral, I don't care. Sorry. Perez has has proven that he can, when the car is working for him, he can fight Verstappen because he was very quick in Jeddah. He should have won that race. He, uh, but, you know, but for the safety car that ruined his strategy. And he should have won in Spain, but for the team telling him to get out of Max's way. Mm. So well, it had a chance had a in chance. those in those you know the early stage of last season when the car was a little bit more suited to Perez, not necessarily by design, but it was. Then he can take the fight to Verstappen. Yeah, I guess you're right in that you want him to be finishing second because that was probably Lewis's main problem uh, when fighting against Max is that Bottas wasn't able to get in between them. But what it does lead to is if. Perez does have a uh, a difficult few races, difficult weekend. That may pave the way for a certain Daniel Ricciardo to (laughs) stake his claim on on that seat for next year. Here's where I think that is completely wrong. Perez's pace might depend more on his willingness to play the number two role, if that's the way it shakes out, than his performance. The way it all worked out last season was fine. He had a few good races. He disappeared for a little bit of the season, which he's done actually for for the last you know, a couple of seasons he's been there, um, but then, you know, he is strong and is useful towards the end. So being useful is more likely to keep him that spot. Uh, If he if he's too good and pushy once he's already been established that he's the number two for the season, which he pretty much will be, then that's when they might bring Ricardo in if he's going to be a troublemaker. His only chance is to come out of the blocks, win the first five races and make it politically impossible for them not to back him. I rarely make predictions, but the first bad weekend Perez has, I guarantee Sky <laughs> is going to be nothing but, will they bring will Ricardo they bring Rick- this yeah, problem? No, you are 100% and you know it, right. and I know it, because yep. they do it all the time to a bunch of different drivers, mm. and the moment they start that drumbeat, it's mm. going to be difficult for Perez and for Red Bull to manage those expectations. The problem is for high-performing athletes is that... Um, your mental state and your ability to manifest doing well is entirely based on yourself. So if you've got um, everybody telling you, oh, Ricardo's there, he's going to snap at your heels, he's going to be the one next in because you had a bad weekend, that can very easily spiral for Perez. So I I, I think even though Ricardo is really basically just going to be a a donut driver, as far as I'm concerned this year, it it might add more pressure than What's a donut driver? As in doing donuts when they want to do demonstrations on top of tall buildings. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like it. (laughs) Donut driver. You've coined a, a new phrase. Okay, I like that. Let's move on. 